When we explore Tudor history, Anne Boleyn and her sister Mary Boleyn were the most alluring pair of sisters who emerged prominently in records, books, and films. But have you ever wondered where the Boleyns came from? Unlike the houses of Percy or Talbot, their ancestors did not seem to have been featured in any chapters or pages in history. But by the time of the Boleyn sisters' birth, their father already owned Hever Castle, beautiful manors, and vast stretches of land. He also had a claim to an earldom in Ireland. Moreover, Thomas Boleyn married Elizabeth Howard, the daughter of the Duke of Norfolk, and a member of the powerful House of Howard. Elizabeth Howard was Anne Boleyn, Mary Boleyn's mother. How did the Boleyns, originally simple farmers from the quiet village of Saul in Norfolk, climb the social ladder to such dizzying heights? What events led them to acquire prestigious estates like Hever Castle and Blickling Hall? Join us in exploring the remarkable rise of the Boleyns. In 1252, the village of Sal, a stone's throw away from Norwich, became the birthplace of a legacy destined to intertwine with England's destiny. Here, Simon de Boleyn, a man whose roots hinted at distant French origins, bought and claimed a swath of English soil. This seemingly simple act was the genesis of a lineage that would challenge and charm the highest echelons of power. The surname Boleyn, possibly a mellifluous twist of Boulogne, hinted at a lineage that might have crossed the channel with Stephen Du Bois and Matilda of Boulogne during their audacious conquest in the anarchy. Simon's legacy was carried forward by his son, John Boleyn, who emerged in the historical records of Walsingham Cathedral in 1283. As a guarantor for his relative, William Boleyn, John Boleyn showcased the family's growing prominence and reliability in local affairs. This early display of solidarity and local prominence marked the Boleyns as a family of substance and reliability. As England's landscape evolved through the reigns of Edward I, the turmoil under Edward II, and the Hundred Years' War, the Boleyns maintained a quiet yet steadfast presence. Perhaps like many of their compatriots, they wielded the longbow of Cressy or Agincourt, further entwining their fate with the nation's martial valor. The Boleyn narrative witnessed a resurgence with Thomas Boleyn and his son Geoffrey Boleyn. Their transition from farming to building the St. Peter and St. Paul's Church in Sal marked a significant shift. This architectural endeavor heralded the family's burgeoning influence. Through his marriage to Alice Bracton, the daughter of Sir John Bracton of Norfolk, Geoffrey Boleyn infused the family with new wealth and prospects, laying the groundwork for a remarkable ascent in English society. As the 15th century unfolded, the Boleyn family, anchored in the fertile soils of Norfolk, began an extraordinary journey of ascent propelled by the vision and ambition of Geoffrey Boleyn. His marriage to Alice Bracton brought wealth and a noble connection, enhancing the family's social fabric. They bore several children, among whom Thomas Boleyn distinguished himself as the seventh master of Gonville Hall in Cambridge, a beacon of the family's intellectual aspirations. However, it was their third son, the younger Geoffrey Boleyn, whose journey would redefine the family's destiny. Venturing from the pastoral quietude of Sal to the teeming streets of London, the young Geoffrey embarked on a journey that transformed his destiny. Starting as an apprentice hatter, Geoffrey Boleyn excelled in earning the freedom of the city through the company of hatters by 1428. His ambitions, however, extended beyond hat making. His determination and sharp intellect soon led him to a pivotal decision. In 1435, he joined the Mercer's Company for more excellent prospects. Abandoning hat-making for the more lucrative and prestigious world of mercers, he became a successful dealer in textile fabrics, such as silks, velvets, and other fine materials. This bold move began his meteoric rise in London's commercial and political spheres. Having ascended to the esteemed position of Sheriff of London in 1446 to 47, following in the footsteps of fellow mercers Hugh Weich and Geoffrey Fielding, Geoffrey Boleyn carved out a distinguished role in the city's governance. His tenure as a member of parliament for the city of London, beginning in February 1449, and his appointment as an alderman from 1452, representing the Castle Baynard Ward until 1457, further exemplified his rising influence and capability. In 1454, a year marked by the mayoralty of Felding, 
Jeffrey attained the prestigious role of Master of the Mercer's Company. This position underscored his prominence within London's vital mercantile community. Jeffrey Boleyn's ascent was both steady and remarkable. By 1457, he achieved what might have seemed unthinkable for a rural farmer's third son from Norfolk. He was elected Lord Mayor of London. This position was not just a title, but a symbol of his ability to transcend his humble origins and navigate the complexities of city politics and commerce. King Henry VI knighted him the same year, further cementing his status and reflecting the royal recognition of his contributions to the city and the realm. In November 1457, as tensions between the Yorkist and Lancastrian factions simmered, threatening to ignite the conflict that would be known as the Wars of the Roses, Sir Geoffrey Boleyn, then serving as the mayor of London, played a pivotal role in maintaining stability. During a crucial gathering of these rival factions at a great council in the city, Sir Geoffrey, understanding the delicate balance of power and the potential for conflict, took decisive action. He mustered a formidable force of city citizens, demonstrating his leadership and commitment to peace. Sir Geoffrey Boleyn's life also took a significant turn when he married Anne Hu, the oldest daughter and heiress of Thomas Hu, Baron Hu, and Hastings. Their grandchild, Thomas Boleyn, first Earl of Wiltshire, may have named his daughter Anne in honor of his grandmother. This great granddaughter of Anne Hu would later become the second wife of Henry VIII. Sir Geoffrey's father-in-law, Thomas Hu, was born around 1396 and played a notable role in his time's political and military affairs. Thomas Hu's illustrious career in English politics and diplomacy started with his service as the Esquire of the Chamber to Thomas Beaufort, Duke of Exeter, the youngest son of John of Gaunt and Catherine Swinford. Hu's journey with the Duke of Exeter to France in 1419 marked his initial foray into significant political and military roles. By 1430, he had become the High Sheriff of Bedfordshire and Buckinghamshire. His military prowess was evident in 1435 when he was instrumental in suppressing a revolt in Normandy. This led to his appointment as Keeper of the Seals of France and subsequently Chancellor of France in 1443. His diplomatic finesse was highlighted in 1444 during the critical marriage negotiations between Henry VI and Margaret of Anjou, solidifying his status as a vital figure in English-French relations. Choosing Geoffrey Boleyn as a son-in-law suggested that Lord Thomas Hu recognized Geoffrey's essential qualities and potential. Sir Geoffrey's marriage to Anne Hu significantly augmented the Boleyn's social standing, weaving their destiny with the upper echelons of the English aristocracy. In 1452, Sir Geoffrey Boleyn made a strategic acquisition, purchasing Blickling Hall in Norfolk from Sir John Fastolf, a contentious figure from the Hundred Years' War known for his role against Joan of Arc in the Siege of Orléans, and also for his strained relations with King Henry V. Fastolf's wealth from military exploits in France contrasted with his tarnished reputation. His story was also immortalized in Shakespeare's works as Sir John Falstaff. This purchase signified the Boleyn family's ascendancy and intertwined their story with Fastolf's complex legacy, embedding them in the intricate fabric of medieval English history. A decade after acquiring Blickling Hall, Sir Geoffrey Boleyn continued his family's rise in 1462 by purchasing Haver Cobham and Haver Brocas, the two parts of Hever Manor in Kent from Sir Thomas Cobham. This acquisition was the pinnacle of his social ascent and led to the establishment of Hever Castle, a lasting symbol of the Boleyn status and ambition. Though Sir Geoffrey didn't live to see the castle completed, his foresight laid the foundation for this architectural marvel. In Sir Geoffrey's life, we see a man who transcended the limitations of birth to reach the heights of society. His story reflects the Boleyn's adaptability and ambition, a family once rooted in the simplicity of rural life now rising to prominence in the heart of England. As we conclude this chapter of the Boleyn saga, we've witnessed the remarkable ascent of Geoffrey Boleyn, the great-grandfather of Anne and Mary Boleyn. From humble beginnings, as the younger son of a Norfolk farmer, Jeffrey's astute endeavors and amassed wealth transformed the Boleyns into respected knights, owners of vast estates, and critical players intertwined with noble houses. His legacy is a vivid tapestry of ambition, strategic alliances, and a relentless pursuit of upward mobility. 
but what lies ahead in this compelling narrative? He passed the baton to his descendants, Sir William and Thomas Boleyn, the grandfather and father of Anne and Mary Boleyn. William and Thomas Boleyn stand at the threshold of further elevating their family's status in England's complex and ever-shifting landscape that is passing the tumultuous final phases of the War of Roses in the early Tudor era. How will they navigate the intricacies of court life and political machinations to create a more distinguished place for the Boleyn name? Join us for more videos as we delve deeper into their stories, unraveling their strategies, triumphs, and challenges. Witness how the actions and choices of these critical figures shape not only their destinies, but also the course of English history. Stay tuned for more captivating insights into the Boleyn legacy.